What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the ShowMeFootball.com podcast. I am your host, Josh Fan, and it is only me today. Connor will not be coming on the show today to preview the SEMO game with me. One, because it's Connor's birthday and he's got stuff going on. So uh, if you guys are watching, make sure you tell Connor happy birthday in the comments. But also, uh, you know, I asked him, I was like, hey, I understand if you don't want to come on today, but uh, did you want to record something on SEMO? If not, I'll do it by myself, because let's be honest, this game, there's not a whole lot to talk about. This is a game Missouri should win 50 to nothing. In fact, they beat SEMO 50 to nothing back in 2019 when uh, Barry Odom was still the coach here. So, I mean, this game should be a blowout. They should win. Um, I think we'll see a lot of underclassmen play in this game, guys that we've been wanting to see that maybe didn't get a chance in some of these other games because Mizzou wanted to stick with what they're comfortable with. Like, I definitely feel that this is a game that Mizzou plays a lot of their uh, underclassmen linebackers or a lot of other linebackers that haven't played a lot. Drinkwitz mentioned that they've wanted to play more than the top two guys at linebacker, which are Blaze Aldridge and Devin Nicholson but they haven't gotten to do that because he said no one else has stepped up in practice, but also a great way to make your players better is to give them actual game reps and see what they can do. And I know the level of competition against SEMO won't really tell you a whole lot about them. Like they should look good against SEMO at the very least, but this is a game where, you know, they should play some of those other linebackers like Chad Bailey and Jamie Petway. And then some of the freshmen like Damian Wilson and Zach Lovett, they should probably get time in this game and you can kind of see what they look like. Maybe one of those guys can help you out uh, later this season. Of course, college football, anything can happen. It's any given Saturday, and uh, there have been uh, FCS teams to beat FBS teams in the past, and Drink even mentioned that in his press conference. He talked about how he put a list of the seven FCS teams to have beaten D1 teams this year in all the players' lockers this week. He says, if anyone thinks they're just going to get to play this game week because we're playing SEMO, they're absolutely insane. And I love that from Drinkwitz. Um, even though, if we're being honest, uh, <laughs> it's kind of the opposite of what Drinkwitz said. Like, they should expect to play in this game. But you want to give your players a sense of urgency still. You want to keep them motivated, um, you know, on track. Um, it's something I always liked about Nick Saban. If you watch Alabama games when they're playing non-conference games against like Chattanooga, he's always screaming at those guys, even when they're up 40 by the second quarter, because he wants them to play a perfect game and wants to keep them on their toes and just help them become better football players, you know, teach them that mentality that nothing is given. Drinkwitz also mentioned how SEMO is uh, one of the best FCS teams at blocking field goals. Um, If I can find the stat, or my mistake, it's uh, 12 total blocked kicks over the past three years. So that means puns, field goals, just any type of kick. They have 12 of them blocked over the last three years, which is a significant number. You know, something could go wrong on special teams for Mizzou. And then all of a sudden SEMO scoring points and you don't want to see that. Uh, Although... I will say uh, special teams is an area uh, on the field that we haven't talked a whole lot about this year that has been very good for Mizzou. They've been, I, they've done their jobs. You know, you don't really talk about special teams unless something really spectacular or really bad happens, but they've just been steady, good. Harrison Mevis is perfect on the season, and uh, they haven't dropped any punts or uh, kick returns, so that's always a good thing to see. Of course, people are always going to point out stuff about whatever FCS team Mizzou is playing that, you know, (laughs) could make this a game, but really it should not be a game at all. Uh, If it is a game, it's going to be because the defense looked absolutely terrible again, and I think we'll start with that. Uh, The defense hasn't been good so far this year. They've given up over 500 yards on the ground rushing only two games into the season. They allowed 35 points against Kentucky. Um, they failed to get stops a lot of the time. CMU, we all know, they looked less than impressive in that game. Um, and a lot of it is just because they don't have the talent. Uh, and again, I want to reiterate, because I've seen a lot of people start to already turn on defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes. You can't turn on Wilkes, guys. Like, reminder, Mizzou has switched defensive coordinators three times in the last six years, from DeMonte Cross to Ryan Walters and now to Steve Wilkes. Um, And I'm not saying all those guys were great at their job. That's not what I'm saying at all. 
but at some point you can't just continue this revolving door of defensive coordinators and expect any of them to be able to scheme around bad talent. That's just where we're at right now. Mizzou doesn't have the talent on defense. Um, I read a stat somewhere, I think it was from Gabe DeArmond of Power Mizzou, who mentioned there was like 22 four-stars playing in the Kentucky-Mizzou game, and Mizzou had like three of them. So uh, that's just where they're at right now. They need to get better talent, uh, especially at linebacker and the defensive line. I think they have some dudes in this secondary. Um, you know, I, I Kelly, I Caleb Evans, the Tulsa transfer, loved what we've seen from him. Chris Abrams Drain had a very shaky game against Kentucky, but for a guy that switched from wide receiver to cornerback, he's really impressed me. Um, and he's had some nice uh, passes batted down, and he's a very athletic guy that I think can keep up with some of the better receivers in the league. Obviously, he had a rough game uh, against Wandale Robinson of Kentucky. But Chris Abrams Drain has a lot of potential. Ennis Rakestraw, also a guy with a lot of potential. Uh, he'll continue to progress. Jalen Carlis looks like a star. Uh, he forced that fumble in the Kentucky game that was really a huge momentum shift, and the whole reason Mizzou was even able to stay in that game, really. Uh, Jalen Carlis just has a nose for the ball. The staff talks about him like he's the next Tyree Gillespie, and you can see why. Um, so their secondary, I'm not too worried about. They only allowed Kentucky to throw for about 170 yards from Will Levis, so their passing game really wasn't that prolific um, against Missouri's defense, but it was the rushing game, again, that killed Missouri. And when Drink was asked about SEMO and what they do well, he said they run the ball, and he said, we ain't too good at stopping it, and he's correct. That's an area where Mizzou has to show improvement in this game. And again, it's SEMO, so they should look really good, but... Uh, you know, I think something you can look forward to in this game is that even though you can't take away too much because of the competition level, this is a game for Missouri to get their confidence back up. I'm sure that defense, their confidence isn't great right now, especially along the D-line and, again, the linebackers. Because that's where they've really struggled. This is a game where they can get their confidence back. They can rush the passer, which, by the way, Mizzou has actually been good at rushing the passer all of a sudden. Um, they actually lead the SEC in pressure, quarterback pressures so far, and they actually rank second in all of college football in quarterback pressures with 60. They're right behind Oklahoma with 63. So Mizzou has been able to get pressure on the quarterback, and they should absolutely be able to get pressure against SEMO. Again, defensive line hasn't been all that great, um, and we've questioned who can step up on the defensive line when it comes to rushing the passer. Um, because also a lot of their sacks have come from blitzes and getting guys like Blaze Aldridge in there. Uh, but defensive line, you still got Trajan Jeffcoat. Uh, Isaiah McGuire, I thought, has put out good tape so far. He had a sack against Kentucky. So this is a game for the defense to get their confidence back up, boost their stat lines, and get ready for their next game after this one against Boston College. I think that's a game a lot of people see as a 50-50 game, and I don't, I don't want to already start looking ahead, but... Uh, Missouri, Missouri should win this game and Boston College that's a game that is going to tell us a lot about what Mizzou's season is going to look like for the rest of the year because if they lose that game too you know I, I really came into this season thinking if they win at least just one of one of the Boston, Boston College or the Kentucky game um, you know they're going to be all right if they go 0-2 in those games it's not going to be great you, you can still win s seven or eight games but um, nine or 10 is probably definitely off the table at that point. Uh, Boston college is a tough opponent. I, I don't want to preview that one too much before we even get to that game, but really this SEMO game, what you're looking at right now is a game where Mizzou can get their confidence back before going into that game against Boston college and get another win in the win column going into that game. Drinkwitz has been pretty good with his coach speak, uh, talking about SEMO as if, uh, Mizzou shouldn't go into that, this game, thinking it's an automatic win. Again, I know why he's doing that because he wants to create a mentality amongst his players that nothing is given. But uh, if you guys actually have been keeping up with SEMO, and I don't know a ton about SEMO, but they're already 0-2 this year. They lost to the Sam Houston Bearcats last week, 52-14. to I've never heard of the Sam Houston Bearcats, uh, but they absolutely beat the brakes off of SEMO. And before that, they lost to Southern Illinois, 47-21. to So it has not been a good year for SEMO at all. So I expect us to see some good things from the defense. I expect the defense to score a lot of the points in this game. There should be some pick sixes. There should be uh, some fumble recoveries and whatnot. 
And uh, another interesting note, too, is that Steve Wilkes is moving up for the, to the press box in this game. Uh, I think he's doing that so he can see the field better, and it's a little bit of a change. It's a little bit of a shakeup for this next game. He can go up there and watch the defense from over the top and see what adjustments he needs to make a little bit better, which um, if there's ever a time to try something like that out, it's now in the SEMO game. So I'll be interested to see what kind of difference that makes. I don't know if we'll be able to take away too much from this game again because of the level of competition, but I did find it interesting that Steve Wilkes will not be down at the field in this game. He will be in the press box uh, coaching the defense. Switching over to the offensive side of the ball now, again, it's kind of the same story with them. This is a game where they can build their confidence, try some more stuff out that maybe they didn't get to try against CMU and Kentucky because the games were closer than they would have liked them to be. Um, you know, again, sticking to what's comfortable. Um, and a lot of the newcomers, such as Mookie Cooper, haven't really gotten a chance to do much in the offense uh, because they haven't really built that rapport with Connor Bazelak and Drinkwitz calling plays in these games. But the offense has disappointed me a little bit this year. I thought they should, should have looked a lot better against CMU. Connor Bazelak wasn't really hitting the deep ball in that game. Bazelak was a little bit better with the deep ball against Kentucky, but there were a lot of times where, you know, I felt like he was afraid to throw downfield. He, you know, had guys open in front of him, just didn't make the thrower for whatever reason. There were a lot of situations where it was second or third and long and Mizzou really needed a big play and Connor Bay's like is just dumping it off or going for the check down and it just didn't help at all and there were some play calls from Eli Drinkwitz that again I was not a fan of last week I think they're calling way too many screens again on downs where they really need chunk plays to create third and manageable or to get a first down on third down they're calling just third and forever screen plays and they're not going anywhere and that's a waste of a down now, a lot of that is because the Mizzou offensive line has struggled this year, and they don't give Bazelak a lot of time to go through his progressions, and their blocking isn't good enough to create anything a lot of these plays. Um, so, again, this is a game for them that they can build their confidence back up, push Simo around. They should push Simo around. They're much more talented uh, than Simo um, going up against that defensive line. So, if they can just open up, some holes for Tyler Beatty, Elijah Young in the running game. Uh, Elijah Young, he's impressed us um, on some of his carries this year, but he hasn't got he hasn't got a lot of the carries because a lot of that goes to Tyler Beatty, who you trust. I mean, we call him bailout Beatty because there's so many times where Mizzou needs to score real quick, and Beatty is just there to take over, and he's so clutch, man. That's what I love about him. But Elijah Young hasn't gotten a lot of those carries yet because he's they're still building that trust with him too so look for Elijah Young to get a lot of carries in this game uh, I am willing to bet Elijah Young gets a touchdown in this game because he has game breaking speed as well and if he gets into the open field I don't think anyone on SEMO can catch him but more importantly you want the offensive line in this game to hold up and give Bazelak a nice comfortable pocket and get some more guys involved Kiki Chisholm is a receiver who we thought okay well he looked really good at the end of last year and now that he'll have a real offseason to build chemistry with Connor Bazelak and truly learn the offense, um, he'll look a lot better coming into this year. He's done not a ton so far. Uh, you know, he had a really nice touchdown catch on that two-minute drill at the end of the first half against Kentucky, but he had a lot of drops in that game too. I'm waiting to see it from Kiki Chisholm. I know he has the potential. He just hasn't put it all together yet. And then, again, going back to Mookie Cooper, Mookie Cooper is super talented and – I know he came into the year with that foot injury. He's a little banged up, so they haven't gotten to see a lot of him yet. Um, but get him the ball in space and also use him as a route runner downfield. They haven't used him as a route runner down the field as much as I think they should have been already. Uh, Wandale Robinson had a huge impact in that Kentucky Mizzou game. He had over 100 yards receiving. Wandale Robinson is in a same situation to Mookie Cooper. He just transferred to Kentucky. Um, after not really enjoying his time at Nebraska, and he makes an instant impact. Wandale Robinson is for Kentucky what we all th think Mookie Cooper can be for Mizzou, but we haven't seen it yet. This is a game against a terrible opponent, let's be honest, that Mookie Cooper should eat in this game. Get Mookie Cooper the ball. Also get Dominic Love at the ball. Also get J.J. Hester the ball. Get anyone the ball who we think can be a capable receiver for this team in the future. Get their confidence up, get them some reps in this game, 
Uh, I mean, I'm sure Drinkwitz knows all this. I've been saying it for a lot of players. I, I mean, he knows this. There's going to be players that get reps in this game that don't typically get reps, which is good for them. And uh, I don't expect the starters to be in long for this game. Once they go up like 20-something to nothing, uh, you know, they're going to be pulled out of the game. And then I'll be interested to see which uh, backup quarterbacks play in this game and how they do. Um, Tyler Macon and Brady Cook are obviously um, the two main backups. And uh, I'm interested to see how they do. We saw Brady Cook instance last year when there were uh, games that were out of reach. Uh, I remember when they were blowing out Vanderbilt. They put Brady Cook in. He had a real nice pass that looked perfect to Damon Hazelton for a touchdown at the end of that one. I like his accuracy. Um, he's very poised for a younger player. Tyler Macon is someone that we think can really thrive in a Drinkwitz offense in the future, given he's a dual threat quarterback. Uh, I'll be interested to see how he plays. And that's a guy him and Dominic Lovett have chemistry. So get them both in the game together and get Dominic Lovett some reps. I would love to see that as well. Um, and that could also entice a certain recruit to come and join the fun, join in on the fun. If you know who I'm talking about, we'll talk about that more at the end of this preview though. But yeah, I mean, the offense has disappointed me a little bit this year. I thought they've been really stagnant at times. They have failed to get scores when they really needed to. Uh, Kentucky game, for example, uh, they had two opportunities to win that game. There was the drive right before they blocked Kentucky's field goal attempt in which uh, Drinkwitz went for it on fourth down. Or I'm sorry, no, he didn't go for it on fourth down. He went for it uh, on third down, of course. And uh, it was a very uncreative play call uh, where he ran Tyler Beatty to the left. There was zero blocking, very uncreative play call, which, again, is why I've been a bit disappointed in drinks so far into the year. And then he punted the ball back to Kentucky on fourth and four uh, when the defense just had not sh- – they didn't do enough to make you comfortable punting the ball back. And I compared it to, uh, for Chiefs fans that watch this too, uh, the – Green Bay Packers game from 2019 where Matt Moore started. Mahomes had the dislocated kneecap, and it was like fourth and two or fourth and three from midfield in the fourth quarter. The Chiefs needed a touchdown, and they punted it back to the Green Bay offense and Aaron Rodgers, and I knew, we all knew from that moment that they weren't winning that game, they weren't getting that ball back, and you just have to be aware there. Like, you have to know your defense well enough that, you know, that's really your chance to win the game right there. Like, don't punt the ball back. Obviously, Mizzou did have a chance to win the game at the end. Uh, So technically, Drinkwitz was right, but more often than not, I would like you to see, or I would like to see you go forward on fourth down there. So uh, they ended up blocking the field goal. Great play by Blaze Aldridge, by the way. And then they drive down the field a little bit, uh, but Kentucky ends up stopping them in the end. Connor Bazelak got shaken up at the end of that game. It wasn't great, but... You know, they had chances to win that game in the offense. Again, they've gone stagnant at times, and it's been a little bit frustrating. I thought the offense was going to make some strides this year, but they just haven't. And God bless Tyler Beatty. I love him, but you can't rely on him for everything. And I'm not saying that as in, you know, Tyler Beatty can't be this bell cow guy. He can. I don't think there's any question that he can carry the load that Larry Roundtree left behind. But I'm just saying that it's dangerous to rely on one guy to bail you out every single time uh speaking of tyler Beatty, though i expect him to pad his stats in this game uh he's like leading the entire nation in yards from scrimmage right now um he's been absolutely amazing like i said and if larry roundtree can be a late round draft pick and sneak onto an nfl roster which he has with the chargers um tyler Beatty has got to be at least a mid-round pick right now he just looks fantastic he's a modern nfl back he can receive out of the backfield he's got blazing speed uh i love tyler Beatty, man he's gonna be a hell of an nfl player i only want to see the passing offense make strides in this game like i and i know it's semo but that's my point is it's SEMO. Like I want to see Connor Bazelak do something that makes you go, oh, that's the Connor Bazelak that we've all been waiting on. You know, that's the Connor Bazelak we saw against LSU who threw for over 400 yards and four touchdowns. We haven't seen that Connor Bazelak since. Uh, he's been a game manager type, which I don't mean that as a bad thing because a lot of college teams would kill for Connor Bazelak's play, but I feel like the shine is kind of wearing off of him a little bit for me. I want to see that guy at quarterback I haven't seen that guy since that game and Connor Bay's lag you know he puts together some really nice drives and moments in other games too where it's like man Connor Bay's like that looked really good we just need to see more of it we just need you to be more consistent 
to me, he looks a little bit afraid to run at times. And I think a lot, a little bit of that is because of that knee injury he had against Arkansas a couple years ago in the last game of the season. Uh, you know, that can definitely mess up someone's, you know, mental, uh, decisions in a game, uh, when they get hurt taking off running like that. But, uh, Connor Bay's like that show against Kentucky that he knows when he needs to run at times, but then there's other times where, I feel like he's afraid to use his legs a little bit. Uh, there was a game towards the end of the Kentucky game where he got annihilated uh, by a pass rusher on Kentucky from his throwing side. And it's like, you got to be more aware. You got to see that guy coming and, you know, make a move one more time. It's the last time I'll say it. This is just a game where I want to see everyone get comfortable and build that confidence back and use that momentum going into the Boston college game. And then real quick, injury report going into this game. Uh, questionable is Case Cook and Ennis Rakestraw. I think Case Cook should be okay to play. Uh, Ennis Rakestraw, it's surprising that he's questionable. His injury at the end of the Kentucky game was scary looking. I'm glad he's just questionable, though. Uh, that's a great sign, but I would probably hold him out for this game just to be careful. And then defensive lineman Cannon York will not play, as well as wide receiver Jay Macklin, which is a little disappointing. I'm... Uh, I'm sad that we haven't gotten to see Jay Macklin get any reps yet this season. He's just been hurt. But yeah, I, I feel like that's all that really needs to be said for this game. Uh, a lot of stuff that I'm sure you guys already thought of. Uh, but I want to hear from you for those of you that are watching the video version on YouTube. If you want to leave in the comments uh, what your thoughts are heading into this game. Uh, but real quick, I wanted to highlight something going on in the world of recruiting right now. For those of you that have been keeping up. Luther Burden, the five-star wide receiver from East St. Louis that everyone has had their eyes on um, for a long time. He decommitted from Oklahoma recently. There was rumors about it for a while, but he finally decommitted from Oklahoma. And now, according to Frank Cusimano of KSDK, Luther Burden will make his announcement on October 20th at East St. Louis High School. And later today, uh, at the time I'm making this, it's 2.14 p.m. on the 17th. Luther Burden uh, is supposed to be making his final three, dropping his final three schools uh, at 6 o'clock today. Uh, we expect it to be Mizzou, Georgia, and either Alabama or Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma could still be in consideration here. Or it could be Alabama, who Burden has been interested in. Uh, but ultimately, I think it won't really matter. The top two schools in this race are Mizzou and Georgia. And if you guys have been keeping up with uh, the recruiting services lately, Rivals.com in particular, two experts on there, Woody Womack and Sam Spiegelman, both changed their picks from Georgia to Mizzou for Luther Burden uh, a few, over the past uh, couple days. So... <laughs> The momentum for Luther Burden committing to Mizzou is there. I mean, all of us can feel it. It just the stars have been aligning for a while. Mizzou, or Luther Burden has visited Mizzou several times. Uh, his family reportedly really likes Coach Drinkwitz in Mizzou. Um, Drinkwitz has been pitching him the whole idea of NIL opportunity at Mizzou and making money in college to Luther Burden. That's in play here. Um, and obviously Mizzou needs Luther Burden. They need that dynamic playmaker wide receiver. And Luther Burden is definitely that. He's the number one wide receiver in the country. It would be a huge win for Missouri and their recruiting class for 2022. It would definitely be the highest rated recruiting class of all time, which would be uh, better than last year's, which was also at that time, the highest rated recruiting class in school history. So it just shows the job that Drinkwitz is doing off the field. Uh, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves again here because anything can happen and Burden is still going to visit Georgia. But from the sounds of it, all the momentum is on Missouri's side. And uh, I think Mizzou fans should be excited. They should be optimistic about this. Definitely wanted to touch on that before we wrap up the episode because it's good to focus on what's going on off the field and recruiting as well and recognizing that. And this would be the highest rate of recruit Mizzou has had since Doriel Green Beckham. So, uh, yeah, it's a great time to be a Mizzou fan. So, all that being said, for those of you watching, make sure you like, share, and subscribe so more fans can find this. And make sure you check out some of my work on showmefootball.com as well as other podcast episodes in the future. And make sure you check out some of my work on kckingdom.com. See you later.